everyone. Um, it's Katie here at the library. I'm just trying to get some lighting stuff sorted out. And there's a lovely shadow, so I do apologize there. Let's see if I move myself. Um, yeah, so welcome to Books Live with Katie at the West Dallas Public Library, where we talk about what we're reading and um, hopefully give you some suggestions. I'm Katie, one of the librarians here at the West Dallas Public Library. If you have questions during the um, live cast, you can um, go ahead and just message. Hopefully I'll read them. If I can't um, answer your question during the post, um, during the live session, I'll try to direct message you or um, email. I will put the uh, my email in the show notes. As well as if you can't watch the whole thing, we post them to the library Facebook page as well as YouTube. So today we are talking about reading resolutions and I'm hoping to keep this relatively short um, because I think setting reading resolutions is a great way to start the new year. And by reading resolutions, I mean setting a new year's goal to read more or read more diversely. Um, it's just a way that you can expand uh, your horizons just a little bit with books. So um, like any other New Year's resolution, I try to set one um, that follows the SMART goal setting um, guidelines. And that just is an acronym for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, or related, um, realistic, and then they're time bound. So for reading, what this means is I'm going to set a goal that is um, specific to me, uh, as well as something that I can measure. And usually what I do is I borrow from the schools and I try to set a goal that's time-based. I am the person who always says, I'm going to read 52 books this year, a book a week, or I'm going to read this list of 100 greatest books ever written. For me, the issue with those is um, sometimes you get stuck on a book or it takes you longer than a week to read something. And that's totally fine, which is why I prefer more of a specific time-bound goal. So as opposed to saying, I'm going to read 52 books this year, I try to say something like, I'm going to try to read 20 minutes a day, five days a week. So that's a much more attainable goal for me personally. Um, if you read quickly, maybe saying 52 books a year is realistic for you. But for me, that's not. So for me, setting a time-specific goal that usually looks at reading, like I said, um, 20, 30 minutes a day for me works. And there's a couple reasons. One, I have kids in the school district and that's their goal. So it's really easy for me to read at the same time as them. It sets it up. The other reason is 20 minutes is just a really easy amount of time in my day for me to carve out. So again, it's not, this may not work for you. This is a goal that's specific for me. So if you want to set a time-based goal, I highly recommend it because it's a lot easier to reach than a book number. Now, you might want to read, just in general, more books in a year, which is a great goal to have. But I don't recommend going for, um, sorry, let me catch my words. Um, I don't recommend like looking at a specific list and saying, I'm going to read this list of books. Because, again, speaking from experience, what happens when you don't necessarily like the book you're reading? Now you're stuck saying, I'm going to read this list of books. You found a book you don't like, and you're stuck reading it because you said you would. Then your um, goal is broken. So again, find a goal that you can reach realistically, that's not too hard, that also meets what you're looking for in um, your life. And there are tons of easy ways to do this. I'm going to tell you my goal, reading goal for 2021. Um, if you want to share yours, go ahead. If not, um, maybe you'll get some ideas on how to set these reading goals for yourself. So I am guilty of saying I'm going to read 52 books in this year. And like I told you, that just doesn't work for me because of if I read a longer book or I go through a phase where I'm not reading a lot, all of a sudden I haven't hit my goal and then I get discouraged. Um, also, like last year, I tried to read more authors that weren't like me. Um, I don't know if you watched one of my first books live. I don't expect you to watch them all. Um, but one of the things I realized is I read a lot of white middle-aged women, but hi, I'm a white middle-aged woman. So I'm reading books of people like me. So I have been trying to read more authors that aren't like me. So um, that means finding authors of color, black authors, indigenous authors, and reading books from their experiences, whether it's nonfiction or fiction. Um, trying to read books written by activists who've lived lives very differently than me. And these are things that are personal to me. And um, because I want to do this, I'm going to strive to find more authors of color or of different life experiences than myself. 
again, this isn't for everyone. And I might start a book and it's not the right book at the right time, but it might be a book that I feel is important for me to read. It might be a book that I really want to um, go back to, or I might need to go through slowly. So because I know these are the goals I want to achieve, I'm going to try to read a book that's written by someone who's led a different life than me. Um, yeah, a half hour a day. That's a really good idea. Morgan, thank you. Um, yeah, mine is 20 minutes because sometimes that half an hour gets too hard. I don't know if maybe my time management skills need working on. Um, but yeah, looking for not only that time, but finding books for more of a diverse background. So my goal, um, as specifically as I've written it for 2021, and I'm going to read it directly, is um, I'm going to spend 20 minutes a day reading physical books, um, hopefully around 8 at night, and focus on reading books written by non-white authors. Um, I am going to start on January 4th, and on January 31st, I'm going to reevaluate my process. This is really specific, and like Morgan out there, you might say, I just want to read 30 minutes a day. I don't care what book it is or who it's by, I'm just going to read 30 minutes a day, and that is fine, as long as you know you can achieve it, and it's something worth reading for. Um, some of the things I do to keep myself motivated is I will keep a reading log. I actually made this last year, and I will show you. Um, I read more than this, but I only wrote two titles down um, because it... I just didn't really keep track, but this will be motivating for me because if I keep track of the days I read and the books I read, then I can kind of go back and see. Um, I read Dear Girls by Ali Wong on February 5th. I finished it of 2020, and then I did write another title in there um, until last week when I was researching for this book live. Um, so again, using a journal to kind of keep track of your progress Another thing that I tried to do last year is a habit tracker where I know this is going to show backwards, um, where I wrote down um, the month and then the day, and then you would color in each day that you completed your habit. Um, I think it's a bullet journaling. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? A bullet journaling thing. That if you are into the bullet journaling, that's a great way to keep track of your reading to create a habit tracker. And this is just a cheap um, notebook that. I think I ordered off Amazon, um, and I think it comes in bulk packs, so uh, maybe get together some friends and do a little bullet journaling for reading, um, virtually of course. Um, so once you find a way that works for you, and that's the big thing. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up is there's so many great reading lists online that will help you with your reading. For me, having tons of books at home is really important. Maybe I work at the library, so I have a little bit more access than a lot of people. So what I recommend doing is always having three or four books on hands, especially if you have a time goal, and having different subjects. So that if you do get caught in a book that you're not getting through, or you, know, you just get to a point where it's like, I can't read this book anymore, you can um, read through, maybe start something else. Um, I always have three or four books in a pile, probably in multiple rooms in my house that I can pick up at any time. And that doesn't even include um, the stacks of books I just own. This is just library books around the house. So I highly recommend keeping multiple books so that if you do get caught up in a book or aren't liking it. Um, this is something I actually tell kids when they come into the library a lot, especially if they have to find a book to read for school. Take three or four books home. At the library, we don't care if you finish them, but I'd rather have you have multiple books at home that you could get into and start reading as opposed to having one that you just don't like and then you put it down. And then once next time, you're really going to be motivated to pick up a book again. Whereas if you can start one, put it down, if you have the next book right there, definitely that'll keep you more motivated to keep reading. Um, so always have those piles and piles of books. Now, again, I'm lucky because I'm here every day. So if I get to a point where in a book and I don't like it, I just come in. But don't be afraid to check out multiple books. Um, use resources like Overdrive or um, uh, Libby and what's the other one? Um, Hoopla, thank you. Hoopla to get more um, books while you're at home. If you have an e-reader or a smartphone or a smart device, those are books like instantly at your fingers where you can read them right away. Um, let's see. I will share in the show notes and when I post this um, some great resources with book suggestions. Two of my favorites are, if you have not checked out the NPR Best Books, 
they have this great interactive website where they show their best books of the year and I think it goes back to like maybe 2012 2013 and you, they give you a list of the books and then you can click on the side they have subjects so you can say I want young adult books or I want poetry or um you can click young adult and poetry and then it'll take out all the books that aren't those categories and leave you a nice list or you can just scroll through the list there are so many great books and like I said it goes back quite a few years so you can look for more books that aren't just published this year um if reading more recent best kind of reviewed books is your thing this is a great resource I spend tons of time looking for suggestions I have checked out right now three or four books from that already um one is a poetry book I haven't read a poetry book probably in like ooh, five six years I think the last time I read a poetry book was when my um, oldest was born and she's eight so clearly it's been more so I have a poetry book waiting for me from this list um so the NPR book concierge I think is what they call it I will link to it it is a great resource I guess highly recommend checking it out um and just getting that reading list going so you have those books ready to go um another one is book riot if you haven't checked out the website book riot this is a great resource for readers um they do lists on all kinds of subjects they have a best of 2020 list going they also do a couple of things that i highly recommend checking out including their read harder challenge which is a way they give you a specific reading goals and you have to read books that fill these categories so it might be something as um easy as read a celebrity memoir or it might be as tricky as read a work translated from another language to english and then they give you suggestions through the year on how to do this challenge and they have ways to track it they have a little community online that you can join so that's book riots read harder challenge and it's just a great way to find um different books to read as well as challenge yourself to read maybe a little differently again it, you don't have to do it it's just a way to challenge yourself to read differently and i've always been very um found it very intriguing i have never done it and i don't think 2021 is my year to try it but who knows maybe they've been doing it for at least uh, five or six years if not longer i've only been aware of it for five or six years um and also book riot has some reading goals just like i've kind of talked about ways to set these reading goals whether it's time different kinds of books um finding different ways to engage with reading um and then um there are a couple other sources i will post that have different reading challenges so some are more like reading more science fiction and fantasy or graphic novels um there was just so many reading challenges out there that you can um engage with or take on yourself so now that you have this great reading goal, um, I'm just gonna give a few more tips. Like I said, I didn't wanna keep this too long. The first one being like, what happens if you start reading a book and you're just not into it? I'm not gonna lie, just stop. There's no reason you have to finish every book you want to read or every book you check out. If you're three, four chapters into a book, just stop, put it down. Um, I advocate strongly for this for readers of all ages. Life's too short to read books you're not interested in. And there's so many great books that come out. So don't hold yourself to finishing a book you're not enjoying. Um, the other thing I would highly advocate for is if you do read books for different age groups to combat. One year I felt really guilty because I didn't think I was reading a lot. And then I realized I was reading an hour every day that I was reading to my kids. So sure, I wasn't reading the latest and greatest mysteries and books that came out. But reading Pete the Cat or The Very Hungry Caterpillar was just as meaningful, just in a different way. So find those different ways you're reading and be sure to count that too. So be generous to yourself. If you're reading newspapers or magazines or um, going online and reading there, that all counts as reading. Please don't not, please don't discount it because it's not reading a physical book. For me, I put reading physical books as a goal for this year because I spend a lot of my um, free time listening to podcasts and reading online. So I'm doing that already. I just would like to read physical books this year. Also think about listening to audiobooks. Audiobooks are 100% legit reading way to re meet those reading goals. Last year, I listened to a couple books, um, most memorably Busy Phillips's um, memoir, as well as I read a couple of listened to a couple of Chelsea Chandler books, um, and I loved it. So if you have the time to listen, whether in a car or while you're exercising or just at home, listening to audiobooks is a great way to increase your reading. Um, 
Yeah, so there are so many different ways you can increase your reading in 2021. So sit down, find that goal that works for you, whether it's just the time spent reading, or if you're going to transfer the reading more widely or differently, you have that option. Okay, I do like kind of ending with some stuff that I have on my table to read. Um, I am about a quarter of the way through Samantha Irby's Wow, No Thank You, which is a collection of essays. I'm really enjoying it, um, but it's going to be overdue, so I might have to return it and get it back. Um, but it meets a couple of my favorite reading goals. One, it is essays, so if I don't finish it, at least I read the essay and I can pick it up later and it's not like I'm losing the plot and the characters. Um, also, she listens to music that I love, so I'm really enjoying the sharing experience, even though we're very different people. Um, I also have Michelle Boutou's um, Survival of the Thickest. She's a comedian, and I caught little snippets of her schedule. I'm mean, sorry, schedule her Netflix special. And I think she's funny, and I love reading comic books because who doesn't get to laugh? So I'm excited about that. I also have Spoiler Alert by Olivia. Ooh, I can't read my own hand handwriting, but it's Spoiler Alert, which is about um, kind of like a fan fiction author meeting the real life action star definitely excited about this book and i've already started um solutions and other problems by ali ali brosh the author of hyperbole and a half which is hysterical so that's what's on my reading table right now i hope to finish those so um yeah that's all i have to share today oh one more thing don't forget the west dallas public library has our winter reading program going on or if you are reading you will get rewarded so be sure to sign up um, just for registering this week, you're going to enter to win a Quick Trip gift card. We have a whole bunch of $10 Quick Trip gift cards that we're trying to get out to you. So register and enter to win a gift card. Um, you also get prizes for adults for reading four and eight books, including at reading eight books, a free book. So more books. Yay! So you can register online um, through our Beanstack portal or stop in the library. Also, um, I will be back at the end of January, on January 27th at 10 a.m. here on Facebook Live to share some wellness books, um, really focused on more like personal self-care, including hair care, skin care, and believe it or not, makeup. So if you are interested in some of those wellness books, join me for a brief chat at the end of January. Let me know your questions, and thank you so much for joining me on this beautiful snowy morning. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much.